Hey everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the astrological message, weekly message for the week between the 24th of June to, June f to July 1st, 2017. So, let's begin with the fact that if you are listening to this video as it comes out on the 24th of June evening time, Beware of extra drama and turbulence, emotional turbulence in your life. The moon is in opposition to Pluto. Whenever the moon is in opposition to Pluto, it's a time to be less obsessive and not to make mountains out of molehills and just stay away from emotion that is too intense and overpowering. Be a little more detached. Other than that, we know that this is a very emotional, melodramatic time. This is a time that we could be more nostalgic and this is a time that all we might want is to go back to those old happy days when we had so much less on our shoulders, when we could just be children, you know? There's a naivety that flows in. And of course, I'm talking about all the planets and cancer in the sky. And this cancer energy has a lot of naivety and a lot of nostalgic uh, reminiscing about it. And a childlike um, uh, energy that really wants to stay away from all the chores we have and for all the things we need to take care of and the people that are hanging on our shoulders and just, you know, be free. Be free and be cuddled and once more be uh, enveloped in that very soft, comforting, womb-like feeling of our childhood. Hopefully, if we had a positive childhood. So all this emotional, melodramatic energy is not going to stay here for long and two weeks it's already moving away as we go into many planets coming into the sign of Leo and we're going to talk about that next week. And, but this week we still have it. We still have that, that uh, energy all around us. And it's getting more intense. And why is it getting more intense? Because the planet of energy, the planet of initiative, the planet of impulses and cravings and desires of our male energy and war and aggression and anger, I'm talking about Mars, of course, is going to be starting in opposition that's going to be at its height on July 2nd to Pluto, or Hades, the lord of the underworld, the guy that rules all the primal emotions that go underneath our surfaces as lava, emotional lava, and then erupt out of nowhere. It's all the more animalistic um, primal desires and needs that we're not always aware of. If we're talking about the difference between Mars and Pluto in that case, well, we're very aware of our desires and our cravings with Mars. With Pluto, it's there, but it's underneath the surface. It's not so much in our consciousness, but it makes us move a certain way and act a certain way and crave certain things without us being fully aware of why it is we're doing it. And... That's the great thing about Pluto, that when we uncover, when we bring from the, our emotional depth things up to the surface, we are able to understand them and see them in the light for the first time and thus grow over them and evolve. And that's what Pluto is all about. But as these two guys are going to stand opposing to each other, this could be a very frustrating time. This could be a time that we feel that the universe around us is a bit of a battlefield. There could be a lot of power struggles around us, a lot of ego struggles amongst us. And many times we can find that we want to push forward, we want our goals to be manifested, and then something comes up. With that Pluto opposing us, something comes up, something that we were not aware of before, something that was not seen before comes up, from beneath the surface and, and emerges and suddenly changes things, Pluto. And, and we need to adapt, we need to change things as well. It shuffles the cards. And this could be also things that are not in our hands because Pluto talks about the assets, the power, 
and basically about uh, the, the essence, I'm sorry, the assets, the money, and the power of other people, and basically other people that are involved or in partnership with us. So as we want to achieve our own uh, desires, we are met by limitations caused by other people or other factors that we cannot fully um, control in our lives. So it could be that um, we go into a new project and then we find out that uh, the investors are not willing to invest as much as they said in the first place. Or that the people that were supposed to be in partnership with us, something happened to them. Or we can go into a conflict with some of our business partners or even personal partners in our life. There's a lot of desires that float up to the service, surface and a lot of primal energy. And it's a great time, you know, on the more positive side, this could be a really good time for transformation because what is this Pluto all about? It, it reflects, it, it produces a mirror to that Mars because that Mars is a bit childlike, it's a bit naive. He doesn't see everything. He wants to surge ahead and complete its mission. And Pluto says, hey buddy, there's things that you've not noticed. There's things that really run a little deeper than skimming the surface. And if you look a little deeper, you'll see that things need to be done differently. And not how you first imagined they should be done. So it's about an opportunity to evolve the way we act, the way we do things, the way we initiate projects and the way we implement our desires and our cravings and our goals in the world we live in and amongst other people. And this is a great time because of all that emotionality to be a little bit more reserved and conservative with how we act and how we think and how we speak to other people. And why is that extra important these days? Because we're beginning a conjunction between Mars and Mercury, the planet of communication, the planet of thoughts, and the planet of navigation through life. And when these two planets uh, uh, come together, the whole system of checks and balances doesn't work properly for us. So we become much more impulsive, and we could really um, act before we think, or speak before we think and do things or say things that later on we'll be sorry for. And that conjunction is going to be at its height on the 29th of June. Other than that, on the 27th and on the 28th we have days that could be a little stressful. The moon is in Virgo in those days, so there's heightened criticism First of all, over ourselves, but also over our environments. And on the 27th, the moon in Virgo is going to oppose um, Neptune. So we have an opposition that is, on the one hand, stressful. The moon in Virgo is a little stressful, it's too critical, and it's too perfectionistic. And on the other hand, we have this Neptune that just wants to be passive and run away and hide within its imaginary world, close and shut down all the, the entrances to the outside world and just be in its own cocoon and remain passive and dreamy because it doesn't want to deal with all that stress from the outside. So why am I saying that? I'm saying that because if we know that ahead of time, and that's a great thing about astrology, if we know that we have these energies that are coming and imprinting us, then we can put them in a balance. We could not go into passivity and hiding from the world on the one hand and not let ourselves be too stressed out or too critical on the other. And just really balance it. Balance it out. And on the 27th, I would really um, suggest that you take a deep breath and that you do 
any kind of uh, meditation ceremony that relaxes you and just puts things in proportions making us understand that we have only two hands one brain that for most of us is capable of doing uh, one thing well at a time and really do it slowly and do it good and that's it you know don't let time stress you out and remember Francis of Assisi I love this guy you know, uh, there's a movie I highly recommend called Brother, Son, Sister, Moon. It was, it's a movie loved by my father as well, by Franco Zaffirelli. Beautiful movie, beautiful movie. And there's a, there are songs by Donovan in this movie. And one of the songs uh, by Donovan is about Francis of Assisi speaking about how we should do a few things, but do them well, take our time, go slowly. And if we do so, we'll find heaven's glory. <laughs> so, uh, look it up on YouTube. Um, very 60s, but I love it. As, a, as the child of hippies. Anyway, uh, on the 28th, the moon's still in Virgo, so still some criticism there. But this time, it's conjunct Chiron and squaring Saturn. Whenever there's a square to Saturn, we could put ourselves down. We could be a little bit in a mood of doom and gloom. So, don't be. And the conjunction to Chiron makes us even more sensitive. It's a time that we need to be extra caring, extra warm, um, forgiving. Both to ourselves and to people in our environment. And, and be very sensitive with other people around us and with ourselves. And caress more than hit with our words and with our actions and really pamper and cuddle and give a lot of TLC to ourselves and to others because this could be also a great time for healing and maturing if we work right with it. Next week Chiron is going to go into a retrograde movement that's going to last up to um, December 4th 2017. It's going to move from the 28th degree of Pisces to the 24th degree of Pisces. So. We're going to talk about it uh, a lot next week, but I would like you to check before you come in next week and listen to the video if you have any planets within that range of 24 to 28 Pisces or opposing it 24 to 28 Virgo or squaring it 24 to 28 uh, Sagittarius or Gemini. And if you do, you'll be more impacted by this retrograde movement. And again, we're going to talk about all about we're going to talk all about it next week. And in the meantime, may we have a beautiful, positive week. I really want to thank you for listening and coming back every week and sharing those videos and commenting, because it gives me a lot of power. I know a lot of you tell me that the videos are very helpful and that they give you a lot of power, but I want to tell you that the feeling is mutual. So thank you, and of course, for private consultations, lessons, and courses, or any question you might have. Approach me, don't hesitate. I'm Boaz Fader, I'm an evolutionary astrologer, and I'm signing out. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.